Hi, and welcome to Caterpillar's Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center. We are here for a behind the scenes discussion of the cat trial number nine, Pac-Man. Joining me today is this team, the brain, and truly the brawn behind this concept, this idea, trial videos. Archie, why did we bring the trials back? This year we're celebrating our 95th anniversary. And as part of that, we looked back at what our customers truly love and the customers love the trial videos. We get asked to win the next one's coming out all the time. So that's what we want to do. We want to bring back what they love and adore. So what they're, what they're seeing, Pac-Man. Why Pac-Man? We actually did some internal brainstorming sessions and we figured out we wanted to create a maze. A maze is a fun way to have fun with our machines, to build them and also to play in. And what's the ultimate maze? Pac-Man. So that way we could actually run our remote control products in there, surprise and delight our customers in a new and fun way. You got it. Well, the maze, of course, the board, everybody is familiar, the, the, the dots, the pellets, uh, what they are. But building the maze, that's where we have some of our talent over here, the, the true uh, operators of, of the gang here. How did you create this maze? That Josh, Ryan, talk to me about how you went about and did it and what did you use to build it? Well, first off, we had to make the decision on how we were going to develop the actual GPS designs. And um, we challenged Ryan Majuria, he's the owner of Quantum Land Designs, and told him to take the actual Pac-Man design and expand that in such a way that we could fit the 236 size skid steer loaders down inside the maze and still have maneuverability. Okay, we'll look at the width of the machine and we just made the decision we're gonna make each lane 12 feet wide. And then we wanted to also visually get an idea of how far did we want the machines to be down inside the ground. So we thought looking at the machines and mocking some things up, about a four feet in the ground was ideal because you could still see the top half of the machines. So from there, we turned it over to Ryan and he built our GPS design and then with that, First and foremost, we needed to think about drainage. So how are we going to let the water drain out of this maze if it starts to rain? So we had to do a little pre-planning with that and prep our field and then make sure that we could find a drainage pipe to put in the ground to be able to drain out if it rains. So Ryan, Neil, your, your role in this, talk to us about your role in, in building this incredible, it's truly a work of art. Yeah, so we found out what the project was going to be, and then we're like, how, what are we going to use to dig it? You know, how, how are we going to cut this maze out of the dirt and make it look like it does today? And so sat down with Josh, and we looked at the fleet that they have here at Edwards, and uh, excavators obviously were the best choice to dig that out just because of maneuverability. And these machines here, the 336 Next Gen Excavator, is, has cat grade with 3D on it. And so does the 323, has cat grade with 3D on it. And so with, with those two machines, uh, we got the designs from Ryan, we put them in there, and everyone was working off the exact same design. And the 336 was a great size machine. One, it's got spade teeth on the bucket. As Josh mentioned, they're 12 foot wide lanes, so you needed a fairly good size machine, a productive machine. And then with the cat grade 3D on it, I mean, it looks like a cookie cutter, just took that out of the, out of the dirt. And it, it worked out really well. I mean, the discussion with, with Josh and I was to figure out what were the best tools, and they worked, they worked very well. How and long did it actually take you to do when that? I was, before you even ask that question, that was one of my challenges to these guys were, how are we going to make and keep that iconic game board true? We want to pay homage to Pac-Man, so we want to keep it true. And that's where they came back and said, with the Cat Grade 3D, we could make it exactly like their game board. The game board, the game board expert here might be, might be the well, gentleman I was gonna, in the middle. I was going to mention the construction, just watching the excavator just scrape the the uh, dirt so gingerly off the top, it was like frosting a cake. It was so precise and delicate, it was amazing. It was quite an experience to watch it. it, it was, it's quite an experience to look at it. <laughs> it was a very methodical process because we knew when this was all done, the digging process was done and finished, we needed it to look look perfect. So the production digging that most of our guys are used to doing, <laughs> you kind of throw some of that out the window and now it's all precise digging. So trying to think how long is it going to take Brian Kane as the operator to dig this precise and clean and the edges nice and straight and square, that's kind of hard to calculate. So we took a shot in the dark and thought, okay, I think he can do it in about four days. You know, thinking 32, 35 hours. Well, at the, end of, at the end of it, it took him 70 hours of digging to dig this absolutely perfectly. 
But Josh, but, if you think of going back to the old days, you know, we started with zero stakes and zero paint in the ground. Absolutely. And and if we would have done that the older traditional way, we would have grade stakes and mm -hmm. lath all over the plates and offsets and cuts and ribbons yeah. and paint. Right. None of that was there. So we probably would have been a well over a hundred hours, if not more, oh, of yeah. just resetting stakes because Brian had to dig methodical to make it work the way it did and it it was gave you true belief in, in the 3D GPS system Exactly, sure. I remember when we first started, I, as a creative director, I was like, we gotta be precise. And I'm like, we need to stake it. We need to make sure we're marking it. And you guys are like, no, the cat grade 3D will do it. It'll be exactly. And to see the drone shot just blows my mind because you can lay their game board right over the top. And it's truly one. It's that technology, Absolutely. technology in action, what we give our customers every day. So awesome that we get to use it on such a fun, fun project. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you, not, you may not know is the expert amongst us, the man who knows more about Pac-Man, certainly than me. I don't know if that's saying much actually, Lance, but you have, uh, a, a, you know, aficionado, I, I would say, of Pac-Man. Is, is that yeah, fair? Yeah, I have a unique background where I've been <laughs> restoring arcades for at least 17 years. So yeah, this, this has been a, just a, an incredible, mind-blowing experience for me. Uh, being able to help concept and help marry the two technologies together as far as you know the game the real world physics the the video game physics the things that come into play that people don't think about that you have to realize how to figure out in the real world and then taking the two brands too like cat and and bandai namco and, and merging them in such a form and fashion that they complement each other and don't overpower one another but, but work in harmony what exactly was your role in so so you kind of created the the, the graphic T tell right, us about right, what you right. did it, it all started this. with the <laughs> it, it all started with the pre-visual yeah. uh, we had uh, uh, Jason Boyer took a drone out did some aerial shots of the area we determined the location staked it out found a game board and just started rendering uh, 3d graphics over the top and helping visualize okay where are we gonna put this where's the location gonna be how's it gonna look and then you started putting in the people and the skid steers and you started to realize the scale of this and uh, we actually had to scale back some because we made the board so large <laughs> that we didn't have enough dirt to we, uh, we do that at cat sometimes we go big <laughs> so actually the board you're seeing is is not the initial design it was going to be even bigger wow well that but the the planning it, it months and months of planning to get to where we are and and the the product you're seeing today and if you hadn't noticed, we are quite spaced out. It's not because we don't like each other. We are safely social distancing because of, uh, obviously we're in the middle of a global pandemic. But it was that very time you spent, Archie and team, planning this in lockdowns and remote. I mean, you didn't see any of this team. No, actually, we started planning in earnest in March. Um, after we did a major trade show in Las Vegas, we came back and started planning but literally the shoot is the first time here in August, the first time we were all actually together. So we did a lot of Teams meetings, a lot of video conference calls to pull it all together. And if anyone knows the creative mindset, it's hard to do that apart. But I think the team came together in a, a way that is just beyond my wildest dreams. And it is a fully internal team that actually put this whole program together. So that's what just blows my mind every day. And kudos to the team. Safety has been, as it always is at Caterpillar, yeah. safety has been paramount. Uh, I, I, we've watched everyone on this set. So uh, kudos to everybody behind the scenes on that. So tell me a little bit. I want to go back to the building of this maze because we're Caterpillar and we love to build and end game as well. But uh, tell me about the machine, the exact machines you did use. How did you get them in and out of what we're looking at? The, as we said, the 336 the was kind of the ringleader mm -hmm. with the with the digging process, but then also we had what we'll call the support machines. Yep. The 336 was continually digging all the time. And that was our goal was to never have him stop and slow down. So he was continually digging the material. And then we had a combination of wheel loaders, 972 and a 950, load and carry the material off. And then we had a, a D6 XE track type tractor starting to create the berm that you see all the way around. So the nice thing about that is the, load, the wheel loaders were packing the material away, but then the D6, of course, also had 
the, the game board design in that machine. It was running off 3D as well, GPS. So then that operator started to create the berm all the way around. And then we also had Ryan Neal on the 323 excavator with the smooth bucket so then he could start working the inside slopes while the dozer was rough shaping things in and then we brought in the 150 motor grader with the massless gps system on it and we finished the insides of the slopes to grade with that and then finished the top and then we left the outsides with the grouser tracks that you see behind us and the reason we did that is to visually see differences in the aesthetics of the dirt so some of the material you'll see is smooth drum rolled with a CS56 that gives a little lighter color, but then the grouser tracks of the dozer gives a little more 3D dimension. And then where the banners are laid on the top, we rolled that again with the roller. And then we had the motor grader tracks on the inside. And then also the chisel teeth that Ryan talked about with the 336 gives that modeling dimension that we wanted for all the sidewalls and the floors. Because you, you wanted to look realistic, like it was dirt. And so absolutely. seeing the, the, the scrapes of the bucket teeth in there, was was what we wanted and he's velvet fingers he's a perfectionist i mean he's <laughs> thank you he's amazing on a motor grader and to, to please josh sometimes isn't always easy so everyone had their a game on and i don't mean that as a compliment but thank you, you know he wanted it to look as, as the absolute best it did and everyone came together and it turned well, and out from well. a creative yeah. perspective we want that texture we want yeah, people was, to it know beautiful. it's real we want people to know the trials we do stuff that's daring and really push the envelope but we want people to see it's real at the end of the day i mean those walls are four feet four, four feet. foot tall Yep. Now, Rachel, back to your original question, most importantly, how did we get the skid steers in and out? Yeah, how did, right? you, get, After how did everything's you get the, player, the, get the, players, the players in and out? So that was a lot of thought. Archie and I had a lot of discussions on what are we going to do to be able to camouflage a way for the skid steers to get in and out. So after, I will say, hours of... <laughs> Well, and we end up looking back to the game board. Yep. The game board yep. itself gives you the way they come in. Yep. Pac-Man mm -hmm. has a way to sneak in and out the sides. Yep. So we leverage that basic concept and then mm -hmm. Josh turned it into a real world way to get them in and out. So we came up with the idea, what better than a shipping container? So we found a shipping container that's 40 feet long that had doors on each end. So we thought that's going to fit perfect because our our berms on the top are 28 feet wide and then we have four to one slope. So about 40 feet is what we need. So we reinforce, reinforce the sides and the top. And then for a little extra safety, we, we brought in the three quarter inch steel robe plates and put across the top so we could run dozer and ro rollers and skid steers across the top of that. So a lot of the behind <laughs> the scenes to make that work. Unbelievable. And the skid steers, they had about <laughs> three inches on each side to bring through the container and about eight inches on the top it was the only clearance to get through that container with the machines. You all in your time at CAT, and I, I think there's a lot of years here of, of Caterpillar experience, uh, most unique or top, to, uh, to, top of the list unique projects you've ever worked on? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and honestly, for me, it's trying to come up with the idea and get it to the end right and not have it rain yeah. or if it does <laughs> figure out rain. how can we still work tomorrow because we knew we were shooting on monday no matter what so archie's like i don't care what you do as long as we're done by monday <laughs> so well, Josh, that was the i mean if you think of the things that archie's made us do in the last six years since <laughs> yeah. the, the trial started yeah. sure back with the jenga i mean that was difficult uh -huh. and some of the other ones were Absolutely. difficult the china shop and, and the sandcastle those were all difficult but this was the most methodical time-consuming yeah. mm -hmm. machine only system that, that we've done of all the trials i just feel like you guys need to be challenged i need to keep pushing your envelope <laughs> well, you're not going to answer your phone calls anymore yeah, yeah. i'm always amazed job. that when you guys see my name on your phones that you still pick up and you're, say hello you're doing a good job <laughs> we have some, and, yeah and kind of going back to the pre-planning you know here at the edwards facility we have 720 acres but it was like, where are we gonna dig this at? Yeah. So we drove around the pickup truck, looking at all of our fields to figure out where's our best material. You know, we, we decided on this field because the material is key. We've gotta put it in, in the right lifts, the right moisture content, the right density to get it to stand and look right and hold for basically two weeks. And, and the texturing of the dirt, the, the way it was laid out graphically and visually on film and on photography looked fantastic yeah i mean the, the way it just pops out i mean if it were just a, a flat plane it uh -huh. would not be nearly as interesting to look yeah. at sure yeah, yeah. sure yeah. 
Sure. Uh, that's just a glimpse into what it takes, the, the months of planning, the very, as you say, the methodical uh, use of the machines and, and everything. So I have to ask because we all love Caterpillar and, uh, and, and Pac-Man celebrating huge milestones this year, anniversaries for both of, both of us. But uh, okay, favorite Pac-Man, Ryan, let's we'll start with you. Favorite Pac-Man character or highest level you've ever gotten to on the game? Oh gosh. <laughs> I'd have to use my brain for that. Also, I, my one of my best friends still has Pac-Man in his garage, and so we we often spend a lot of time in there playing mm -hmm. the game in there with the old the, the big style. So yeah, I, I don't know if I can give you a favorite. It's yeah, just fun right, to well, play. That's okay, just like to play. Yeah, got it, Josh. I don't know if I have a favorite. Uh, obviously, I mean, I haven't played Pac-Man probably since I was in seventh grade, and I have gray hair now. That's so a long time ago. It's time to memory. start again. Yeah. It's time. You, you have but, to go. Um, I like the character Pinky. I think that character stood out more than anybody this week, so that's kind of my favorite. I like it. I like it. Lance? Uh, I'm going to choose Blinky. All right. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> we, we had one of the operators had to leave early for an event that he was going to be uh, performing in later on. Uh, so some of the wider shots, they needed a body double, and I got to stand in as, as Blinky. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, I, I had no idea waking up that morning that I would be standing on the berm watching the destruction at level 256. And the best part of that was is when Lance came up on the berm, the other operator said the smile on his face was like a two-year-old on Christmas morning. <laughs> he was so excited to actually get to be one of the The ghosts. blending of your loves of Caterpillar oh, and Pac-Man. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. I love it. Do you have a favorite or highest level? Not highest level, but I would say my favorite. It's going to be a little bit different. It goes back to nostalgia. Doing Pac-Man has really stirred emotion in me for the simple fact that I can remember as a young boy playing Pac-Man with my aunt and uncle down in Georgia. So to actually think about my aunt Ethel and challenges that she would do for us, it just bring it back and then to bring my professional career into this now, I look back and look at the game board and I can think of them. That's awesome. Well, uh, congratulations. And this is my favorite Pac-Man, my new favorite Pac-Man memory <laughs> right here uh, at Edwards, Illinois at our demonstration center. So thank you guys, congratulations. It's thank amazing you. video. So please make sure you check out everything around this trial video at cat.com slash trial nine. Thanks for watching.